Hello. Thought I'd do a quick video to demonstrate the port to the BBC Micro of the text adventure game One Room, which was written in 1983 for the TRS-80 color computer. Primarily an American machine, although it made its way to the UK eventually. TRS uh, Radio Shack. Uh, as the company was known, had a chain of stores, uh, electronic stores across America called Radio Shack and the UK equivalent or the UK branch of that company was called Tandy and so we had those stores as well. The game I wanted to demo is called One Room and it's a text adventure game so there's no graphics to the game, it's just text. Uh, you type in text commands like North, South, get lamp, kill troll, although there are no trolls in this game. And you have to win the game, you know, make your way through the game. Uh, usually text adventures have multiple rooms, different rooms for you to explore, different locations to explore. Perhaps collect treasures, uh, perhaps defeat enemies and win the game. But this game is unusual because it's all set in a single room. Um, I have ported it to BBC Basic just because it's uh, an interesting artifact really and I was interested in porting it and it does make it easier to play online. So let's just boot up the game in this BBC Micro emulator and here is a title screen which is taken from the book in which the game was first published and here are some instructions. Um, I'll scroll through those in a minute. The game was first published in the Rainbow Book of Adventures which was the result of a competition run in the Rainbow magazine for TRS-80 users. And there was a competition to find people who'd written text adventure games that were deemed worthy to be published in a book that collected all the games. And One Room was one of the winners. There were several games that made it into the first book of uh, adventures, over a dozen I think. And Jorge Mir was the author of One Room and also of another game which I mentioned here, Dreamer. Dreamer had a lot of rooms I believe, it says here later on. And One Room only had one room, one location to explore. And both games were written under constraints as it says here uh, Jorge Mir was the honorary winner of the One Arm Tied Behind Your Back medal because he wrote under these self-imposed limitations. So one room restricted the player to only one room. And Dreamer was uh, a program that was squeezed into 4K of memory. So some interesting constraints there. And I think one room is also interesting because it may well be the first text adventure game to be set in terms of the narrative, in a single room. So that's why I was interested in it and in porting it to the BBC Micro. In the course of which I discovered that the game, as published in the Rainbow Book of Adventures, the first Rainbow Book of Adventures, because I know of at least four Rainbow Books of Adventures, the listing of One Room as published in that book was full of bugs and I needed to fix the bugs uh, to some extent, without try without completely rewriting the program, uh, just to make it playable. It, for, you know, within reasonable definitions of the word playable, because uh, there will still remain some bugs, but how, how buggy can a game be before people just give up? I did find a blog where someone had played the game and had to look at the listing to actually work out how to win. And I also had to do that on several occasions while I was trying to figure the game out. But um, I don't think that's a very reasonable expectation these days. Although back in 1983, when the game was first published, it probably was reasonable. Part of the point of these uh, books of listings, program listings, was to teach the reader how to program their own games. Although if you used one room as a model for programming, uh, you might pick up some bad habits. But um, nevertheless, despite all the bugs and the other issues 
with the game. It's it's a it's a great idea and it's a kind of intriguing game. So let's go past the instructions and then boot into the game itself. Here's the first screen of the game. A one room adventure is the title. You have just awakened. You don't have the slightest idea where you are or even who you are. You seem to have amnesia from a blow to your head. How original. Well, of course, now we've had loads of text adventure games where you start off with amnesia. It explains why you blunder around in the game, not apparently knowing where you are or who you are. But um, of course, in 83, it wasn't that hackneyed or cliched an idea. Press any key to continue. If you get stuck and don't know what to do, just type in help and see what happens. Also, if some of my answers don't make sense to you, please keep in mind that sometimes I may get confused, the game tells you. If that happens, you should just keep trying other things. Which is an interesting um, set of instructions there. But the help command is indeed quite useful and perhaps a bit unusual in text adventure games at that time. If you get tired of playing this adventure and you haven't solved it, just type save. You can continue the adventure at a later time by typing the word load. Now load and save, um, the code, the program code for those two commands, as printed in the first Rainbow Book of Adventures, didn't work. And uh, that was one of the things I had to debug, the code for load and save. Anyway, you press a key and the game begins. I am in the middle of a room. I'm sitting on a chair. I'm blindfolded. What should I do? So what's the first thing you'd try to do? I suppose you'd try to spell correctly. Uh, something like get up. I can't get anything now, says the game, which is a misunderstanding on the part of the parser in the game, but still kind of appropriate, fortunately. So you might try to rock chair. Sorry, I just don't know how to rock anything, says the game. And you'll soon find that the game doesn't know lots of things, doesn't know how to do lots of things, lots of verbs because it's not a massive listing and the vocab, the vocabulary that the game understands is limited. But in a way that's an advantage or a kind of a help to the player because it does, the game does tell you if it doesn't understand what you're trying to say. So you soon narrow down the range of verbs that you can use. If, if I try to, I don't know, shout for example, it says try using two word commands. If I try to shout for help, it says, sorry, I just don't know how to shout anything. So you know that the verb shout isn't acceptable in this game. Um, so what else could you try? Could you try, I mean, you'd, you, you'd try all sorts of things, I suppose, wouldn't you? You'd try um, moving. You'd try moving the chair. Nothing happened. You'd try to break the chair, perhaps. Uh, it says, I don't see anything like that around here, which is not a good response, <laughs> given that the game has just told us that I am sitting on a chair and I'm blindfolded. So perhaps you would try to remove the blindfold. I can't. My hands are tied with a rope. Ah, so that explains the problems that we're having getting anywhere or doing anything. So let's try to perhaps untie the rope. I can't, my hands are tied with a rope. Which again doesn't make sense. You can't untie a rope if your hands are tied with it. So what can we do? Can we cut the rope? Can't, my hands are tied. Can we presumably rub the rope? So when you try rub rope, the game asks you on what? And of course you would try to say chair, try to rub the rope on the chair. But the game says nothing happened if you try that. I mean, but clearly you're onto something because it did understand the command rub rope. So you would try it again, I suppose. What can you rub the chair on? On me? Nothing happened. Rub the rope on... What else is there? I mean, we don't have anything else to rub the rope on. On hands? Nothing happened. So at this point you might despair and give up, and I'm sure many people did. But remember, there is a help command. So we try help. Tell me which object has your little puzzled. So perhaps we type rope. And the response is, have you tried rubbing it on something sharp? Well, no, because there isn't anything sharp. <laughs> so perhaps we should ask for help with something else, i.e. the chair, which is the only other object we know exists. Have you tried feeling it? Now that is in fact more helpful. So let's feel chair. 
I feel something like a nail, the game tells us. And aha, that could indeed be the sharp object we're looking for. So let's rub rope. On what? On nail. Okay, the rope was torn by the nail when I rubbed it. So it looks like my hands are now free because the rope has been torn in two. So let's try to remove the blindfold now. And I should say you can abbreviate most of the time. You can abbreviate commands to just the first three letters of the words of the command. So I can, instead of saying remove blindfold, I can just say remove the, or rather rem bli. Okay, I did. Aha, uh -huh. so let's look around us then and see where we are. I'm facing the north wall suddenly, no longer blinded. I can see a chair, a desk, a radio. Intriguing. So I'm not going to play through the whole game, but I'll just give you a flavour of what you can do in the game. So we've untied ourselves and uh, removed the blindfold, so now we can see some objects. So we can, for example, examine the chair. chair looks rather fragile. I don't think that's actually relevant. Um, can we get the chair? Okay, I got it. It's now in our inventory. I am carrying a chair. Um, you can type inv for inventory, not I. So that's good. There's a desk. Can we examine the desk? It's the type with a rollover top and has a large drawer on the side. So can we open the drawer? That's probably what you would try, isn't it? I can't. The desk is locked. Uh, or I can't, desk is locked, as the game tells us. I should say that I've taken all the messages verbatim from the original listing of the game. And in fact, I've retained all the line numbers in the listing as well to try to, well, reduce errors, but also to keep the game as authentic as I can, I suppose. I don't know why I felt that was essential, but all the line numbers that are used in my version of the game are this correspond exactly to um, the code that's on the same line number in the original listing of the game, which was a program written in TRS-80 Color Basic, I think it was called. Um, anyway, I just thought I'd mention that. So um, the messages are taken word for word from the original listing. So I can't, desk is locked, is almost certainly what the original game said. Anyway, desk is locked. So we can't get into it at the moment. We can't sort of use violence to hit the desk or break the desk because when we try hit desk, the game says, sorry, I just don't know how to hit anything. So we can't hit things. Can we break things? It didn't seem to understand break chair. Ah, now when I say break desk, it says with what? So perhaps we should try to break desk with chair. I tried, but nothing happened, the game says. Which is interesting. Um, I know I've seen the code and kind of familiar with the code of the game, having ported it from TRS-80 Color Basic to BBC Basic, but I haven't actually followed every single code path through. So some of the commands and some of the responses to commands that the game offers are um, new and slightly surprising to me. Anyway. I'm going to drop the chair because I don't think we need it. Um, what else have we got here? A radio. So let's examine the radio. It's a portable radio. Now, there are various things you can do with this radio. And not all of them are very good. If I try to um, turn the radio on. It, 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 I, I tried, but nothing happened. You can try to use radio. Sorry, I just don't know how to use anything, the game says. I do think you can um, switch the radio on somehow. I just revealed another kind of command, I suppose. I said on radio, and the game said where. And when I just pressed return, it said I can't connect that. So that's given away the fact that you can connect things to other things in the game, potentially. But I think you can... Is it switch radio? Sorry, I just don't know how to switch anything. Is it um, play radio? Is that what it is? I hear music coming from the radio, which is indeed what is meant to happen. I hear music coming from the radio, the game tells me again. And if I keep looking, I suddenly get told 
Radio announcer interrupts the program. A truck stop has been held up. One of the truck drivers has been kidnapped. There are hundreds of truck drivers searching around for their friend. If you have a CB set, turn it on and listen to the action. <laughs> and uh, it's a bit of a weird announcement uh, to be on the airwaves, but uh, there you are. I suppose it's uh, a live incident, isn't it? So they're following it with live news. But um, you're told that there's been a kidnapping of a truck driver. And I suppose you deduce that's you and that your friends are searching for you. And, and the announcement does mention a CB set. And I believe CB radio sets were sold in their thousands by a Radio Shack. And of course Radio Shack were the company that made the TRS-80 computer, which this game was originally written for. So that may well be why the author, Jorge Mir, was inspired to put a CB set in this game. And in fact, this game kind of revolves around CB radios. So that's an interesting little tidbit there for you to ponder. Um, if I keep looking in this game, we get another announcement. Uh, radio announcer interrupts the program. The search for the kidnapped truck driver continues. His semi-truck was found in an abandoned road. There is speculation he may not be alive. Well, if it's me, I certainly am alive. Or am I a ghost? Is that the trick to this game? Is that the uh, secret twist? No, it isn't. But it um, might have been interesting. <laughs> but it's not that. Um, and I believe that's the last announcement that you get from the radio. If, I, if you keep typing look, um, the game keeps telling you I hear music coming from the radio. But I think it eventually stops. I need to keep on typing look and yes sure enough the radio has stopped I'm examining the radio now it says it's a portable radio if I try to play radio it does nothing I'm not sure that's the right response or if that's a bug I don't know I'm sure there was something you could else you could do with this radio that was it if you try to type open radio it says the back cover popped open and something fell to the floor now, if you look down in this game, or press D for down, you're told, I'm looking at the floor. I can see a piece of rope, the rope that we uh, just untied ourselves from, a blindfold, which we just removed, a battery, and a small rug. Now, it's the battery, presumably, that fell down. If we examine the battery, it's a 12-volt battery. And, you know, you can pick this battery up, you can look north again, and you can try to insert the battery. It doesn't know how to insert. I think you can put the battery, can you, in the radio? I can't. Can you connect the battery to the radio? Can you do something else? I don't know. Um, so that might... To give you pause for thought and delay you quite a little while trying to play around with the radio and the battery but you know and, and that's something you'd pursue if you were playing this game yourself for the first time but let's just turn away to the west wall for a minute there's a window there's some antique furniture a coat rack and a coat on the rack let's look at the south wall i can see a door a switch on the wall a picture a flower pot and at the east wall toolbox, a couch, a big bird cage, and a wood-burning stove. If you examine the cage, which looks interesting, it has a white dove in it. Can we open that cage? Just for laughs. I can't, the gate is wired shut. So that's a problem to solve, clearly. If we go back north, or rather south, um, and try to open that door, uh, sorry, it does not open. I mean, that would be too easy, wasn't it? If the room escape game just let you escape by opening the door um easiest game of all time incidentally i've just realized that this may not in fact be the first game to be set in a single room because i believe there is another game in the first rainbow book of adventures which is also set in a single room and i believe it involves you just trying to open a door or unlock a door, or answer a door, or something. Answer a doorbell, or something. And um, that may well be set in a single room, but I haven't actually tried that game yet. But I may do. 
in due course. Anyway, um, we can't open the door. If we look west, there's a window. Can we open the window? Sorry, it doesn't open. What can we do? Can we get this coat? Get the coat that's on the coat rack. Can we examine the coat? It's a sports coat. Great. <laughs> what, what that's supposed to tell us, I do not know. Can we wear the coat? Oh, it doesn't um, allow you to wear the coat. There, there is something you can do, which is examine the pocket of the coat. So you have to kind of deduce, I suppose, that the coat has pockets. And once you do that, you see a pair of pliers. You can get the pliers. And if you remember, there was a bird cage to the east. And we couldn't open the cage because the gate is wired shut. But if we try to cut the wire now, it says with what? And you say pliers. And it says, OK, the wire is now cut. So we can now open the cage, the bird cage. And we can get the bird, or we can try to get the bird, but it says, the game says it won't come to me. So if we look and examine the cage now, it's empty. So where's the bird gone? Um, turns out if you look up, the game says, I am looking at the ceiling. I can see a bird flying around. And this is another puzzle now to try to get the bird, because clearly, well, not clearly, but... Um, if the game says the bird won't come to me, that implies there might be a way to make the bird come to you, or to uh, tempt the bird or entice it. So that's an interesting little problem. And what use that would be, we don't yet know. Just looking around a bit more, what else can I... Oh, I just wanted to mention that these direction commands, north, south, east, west, up, down, just turn you around in this single room, this one room which gives the game its name. And you're not moving locations as such, as far as the story is concerned, as far as gameplay is concerned. But the charge has been levelled at this game, that it's not a one-room game, that it's a four-location game. In fact, a six-location game, because you can face the north, south, east, and west walls, or the ceiling, or the floor. So you've got six locations, uh, technically, to look at. Um, and if you look at the code, the game implements six different locations, if you like. Each location has a different set of objects that are visible in it when you're looking at it. But that doesn't mean that this game isn't a one-room game. I mean, it's a one-room game. It's called One Room. It's called that several times. It's described as a one-room game several times in the book, the first Rainbow Book of Adventures. And in the source code of the game... I mean, it's set. The narrative is set in a single room. You have to escape the room. Yes, it's also implemented as six locations, if you want to call them locations. But that's not a contradiction. It's both things. It's both a one-room game and a six-location game in code. But it's a one-room game as far as you're concerned when you're playing it. So um, that's my uh, two cents worth there. So I won't, as I said, I won't play through the entire game, but I just wanted to give you a bit of a flavour of it, so I hope I've done that. It's an intriguing game, and not always easy to solve or obvious to know what to do next or how to make progress, but there are some hints if you type help. For example, let me try typing help and putting coat... Oh, sorry, I can't help you with that item. Let's try help with cage. Oh, it doesn't help with that. Try help with bird. Let it fly away and see what happens. So that's of interest, I guess. Or rather, that might be useful. The flower pot is also an object. If I say help and ask for help with flower, sorry, I can't help you with that item. So perhaps the word help or the command help isn't as useful as I thought, but it does have some, it does offer a few hints which uh, might well uh, help you along. Um, just see if I can get some help with the picture there. No, it can't. Okay. But, uh, well, anyway, that's a flavour of the game for you. I'll put a link in the description for this video. I'll put a link to where you can download a disc image of the game for the BBC Micro and where you can play it online as well, a link to play it in your browser. 
without needing to install an emulator. I'll also put a link to the original TRS-80 version of the game and to an emulator, again, an in-browser emulator where you can play the game, and also a link to the blog where I found some quite useful info about the game, a blog written by somebody who'd actually played through the game and listed it and tried to figure out how to actually win, and pointed out some bugs as well, which I fixed, I hope, fixed quite a few bugs, and they're also in the forum posting I link to, and that forum post is the place I mentioned before where you can play or find links to play the game online and you can find the source code as well or for the port to BBC Basic of this game that I've done. And um, what I'm going to do now, just to close, is copy and paste the walkthrough for this game into the emulator. So I'm just going to restart the game and I've written the walkthrough for this game as a series of commands, one command per line in a plain text file. So the text file has one command per line and I'm just going to copy and paste it into this emulator and it's going to whiz through the game. So if you don't want to see any spoilers, look away now, although they'll whiz past. But there is an ending message, the end game message, which will appear on screen at the end. So if you don't want to see that, look away. <laughs> But here we go, uh, yeah, as you can see it's um, whizzing through the game, I've just pasted in a massive wall of text, massive series of commands which are being processed by the game, and there you are, the game has finished. And it pauses for a little bit, and that's it, it then goes back to the beginning. <laughs> so that was One Room by Jorge Mir. For the TRS-80 ported to the BBC Micro, source code in BASIC, and that's given you a flavour of one of the first single room text adventure games that were ever written. Thanks for watching.